Hi and welcome to 3D Printing Geek. In this video I will show you how you can build this cool raven for Halloween on your own. Keep watching and enjoy the video. To build the raven you need a micro servo like a Tower SG90 Pro, a microcontroller, I use an Arduino Nano, some wires, some hot shrink tubing, two red LEDs or whatever color you like, some screws and some black feathers. You also need some tools. A drill with some drill bits, a pair of tweezers, a screwdriver, then you need a side cutter, a wire stripper and a soldering station or soldering iron. For the body of the Raven I downloaded and printed out the Halloween Crow by Dan Man, which you can find on Thingiverse. You find the link down in the description. I printed the model in vase mode as is suggested on the Thingiverse page. That makes the Raven very light. I want my Raven to look scary and what could be scarier than a Raven with glowing red eyes. I prepare the holes for the eyes with a small drill, which I later make larger using a bigger drill, so that the LEDs fit in these holes. My LEDs have a diameter of 5mm, therefore I use a 5mm drill to make the eye holes larger. Additionally to the eye holes, a third hole is needed in the back side of the head. This is used to put the LEDs for the eyes inside the head and through the eye holes and to feed the wiring through it. Now we prepare some wires, stripping the insulation of their ends to solder the LEDs onto them. The ends of the wires are tinned with my soldering iron and then soldered to the LEDs. To prevent any chance of a shortage of the legs of the LEDs, I put some heat shrink over the ends of the wires. To put in the LEDs for the eyes and position them, I use some tweezers. My fingers are definitely too small to fit through the hole in the back of the head. It can be a little bit tricky, but after a while I got them in the position I wanted them. To prevent the LEDs from falling out of the eye holes, I use some super glue to glue them to the head. The super glue I use still gives me some time to correct the position within one minute or so. I repeat the procedure for the second eye. This is a finished Raven's head. To move the head I use a SG90 Tower Pro servo motor and mount it to the body. I have to make a big hole in the body, large enough so that the servo motor fits in it and I can fix it to the body. Here I use a bigger drill like a cutter, but you could also use some tweezers or a sharp knife to cut the hole into the body. Now I place the servo motor into the hole, feeding the wire through the hole first, and then I fix it using two small screws. In the next step I mount the servo horn to the head of the raven. Then the head can be put onto the servo motor which is already in the body. First I tried to glue it onto the head. That would work, but uh, I found that the position wasn't correct and therefore I changed my mind later, repositioned the servo horn and screwed it into the head with some small screws. What would a raven be without sound? But before going on it's time for a short ad from this video sponsor which is PCBWay. PCBWay is an industry-leading manufacturer of PCBs providing high-quality PCBs at a low price, making it your one-stop manufacturer regardless if you're a DIY maker, a growing startup or a settled company. Make sure to check out PCBWay for your next project. To get the right sound, I cannibalized a scarecrow which can be bought in gardening shops and garden centers. Uh, first I tried out how it works, put some power to the power supply. It has a light sensor which isn't an infrared sensor, it uh, reacts on a change of light so the crow wouldn't work in the dark, but I want the crow to work in the dark as well. I'm going to exchange the simple light sensor with a PIR sensor which is known to work in the dark as well because it reacts on the warmth of animals and humans which makes it much nicer if you put the crow in the dark when someone walks by the crow gets activated 
and the person may be scared. Again, some wires have to be prepared. The PRR sensor has three connections. V-in, which can reach from 2.7 to 12 volts, ground, and the out pin, which will change its level from low to high when it's activated. This signal will be used to trigger the motion and the sound module. I solder the prepared wires to the PIR sensor, which I again insulate using some heat shrink. Alternatively, you could crimp some DuPont connectors to the wires. Then I solder the prepared PIR sensor to the pins of the sound module. Since I want to control the sound module using the Arduino Nano, I solder a separate wire to the signal line of the sound module. Furthermore, we need one wire for VCC and another wire for the ground connection. Here you can see how I put the PIR sensor in the chest of the Raven. I glued it there using some hot glue. Next I prepare a 4 times AAA battery holder to power the circuit. I take the Arduino and solder the wires to ground and to V-in. The V-in pin of the Arduino Nano accepts a voltage from 6 volts to 20 volts which is regulated to the 5 volts the Arduino Nano uses internally. Let's finish the circuit according to the following circuit diagram. The PRR motion sensor trigger output is connected to D2 of the Arduino Nano. The control wire for the servo goes to D3 and the trigger output for the sound module is connected to D4. Furthermore, the two LEDs are connected to outputs D7 and D8. All ground wires of the components are connected to ground, except of the sound module where I put a switch, because I want to have the ability to turn the sound off. For the LEDs, I checked the forward voltage at which they shine bright, and it was about 2.8 volts. Using Ohm's law, I calculated the current limiting resistor to be in series with the LEDs to be about 120 ohms. Here's a quick look at the sketch I uploaded to my Arduino Nano to control the Raven's behavior and motion. You will find the complete sketch on my GitHub page, which is linked in the description. It's a modified version of the file that comes with a download from Thingiverse. Besides changing the pin definitions to the pins I used, I also included an interrupt service routine which is triggered by the PIR sensor, which then triggers all the actions the Raven should do, like blinking the eyes, moving the head and activating the crow sound. All left to do is to place the electronics inside of the Raven's body. I use different methods. To place the speaker, the Arduino Nano and the sound module, I use some double-sided super tape and place the components inside the body using my tweezers. I place the body tail connector inside the body and fix it with some screws and glue the tail to the connector using some hot glue. I did the same to put the feet on the Raven's body. I use some of the black feathers to hide the gap which is between the head and the body so that it's not visible anymore. You can also use feathers to cover the rest of the body if you like. And here's the final result. Doesn't it look awesome? I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did building the Raven. And I really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, like the video and maybe share it with your friends. See you next time here on 3D Printing Geek.